This is Braden Kelly of bloggingintnovation.com here with Dan Pink, author of the new book, Drive. Uh, just want to ask you a few questions today, Dan. Sure thing. Let me just uh, pull it out here. What most surprised you, either in the writing of the book or in how people have responded to the book? I, well, I mean, to write this book, I looked at about 40 years of research in human motivation. And I guess what surprised me about that is that it... it sort of define my notions of, of why we do what we do. It turns out that human beings are far more complex than we, than we think. Um, these carrot and stick motivators that we think are everything uh, actually work but in a narrow band of circumstances and other sorts of drives that we have to do things because they're interesting, because they're cool, because we like them uh, end up being uh, much more powerful than I would have ever expected. I read The, the Carrot Principle have uh -huh. you, uh, by Adrian Gostick and right. um, I forget the other gentleman's name. Uh -huh. have, you, have you seen that one? Uh, I have not read the book. I have it, and and I think that's an, I think that makes an interesting. I, I don't know the book, but um, you know, one of the things that I think that what they do is that they talk about the importance of recognition, which I think is really really important. Now, the thing about recognition is recognition is a is in some ways an after the fact um, uh, form of reward. It isn't a contingent reward. It isn't even though they call it carrot principle. It isn't kind of dangling something out in front of you to try to get you to do something. It's an acknowledgement for a job well done. It's a form of feedback. Right. That's that's definitely how they described it. Uh, so what about current management techniques do you think restrict innovation? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's precisely that, that we think that the only thing that motivates people are carrots and sticks, that if that but for these rewards and punishments out there, people wouldn't do anything. And I just think that's demonstrably wrong, particularly when it comes to innovative tasks. And what the research shows pretty clearly is that for, for creative conceptual work, for innovation, those carrot and stick motivators, the if-then motivators, if you do this, then you do that, they don't work well at all for creative conceptual tasks. They're good for simple and interesting tasks, but for creative, somewhat interesting tasks, tasks they, don't work, they don't work very well. Um, and so I think we need to really abandon that as a, as a strategy for motivating people to do innovative work. Okay, and so uh, what do managers need to change then in order to increase you know, motivation? I mean, I mean, one of them is, is, is simply is, this is not to do that, and the other one is to say for creative conceptual work, what people, the real pathways to that are, is a sense of autonomy, so allowing enormous amounts of, of, of freedom, and you see this in a whole array of examples of a company called Atlassian that does something called FedEx Days, which is one uh -huh. day when people can work on anything that they want. That's produced a whole array of innovations. 20% time, where people can spend 20% of the time working on anything they want. Done at Google and some other companies. That's produced a whole array of, of, of innovation. So I think that uh, putting a premium on autonomy, recognizing that people want to get better and want to make progress, and, and perhaps most important is infusing what people do with a sense of purpose so that they know where their piece of it fits in, so they recognize that what they're doing actually matters, that it's making a contribution, not in a false way, but in a very legitimate way, you know, letting people know why what they do matters and has an influence in the world. Okay, sounds good. And then as you've launched the book and as it's out in the marketplace, yeah. uh, is, there, is there anything that's, that's come to your mind, an insight that, you know, now that, now that it's, it's done, it's in the can, that, you know, if you could add it right now, if it was possible, that well, you would never, like to sneak it? Well, it's never permanently in the can because we can have, I would have fixed a bunch of typos that readers have found. Well, one of the curious things about uh, writing books where there's email addresses that people will find typos and t send them to you, which is totally cool. So we fix them in subsequent editions. So I would have fixed those. Um, I think that I might have, um, uh, and I, and I, and, and you know, maybe in a subsequent edition of the book, make a, a slightly uh, stronger case for uh, what we were talking about earlier, which is which is recognition. Um, uh, I think that I think that matters, and I, and I think it matters not because it's a not because it's a contingency, but because it's a form of feedback. And people are desperate for feedback, and recognition is just one facet of that. And it's something that I think should be uh, encouraged if it's done in a legitimate way that does it ends up being non-controlling. I think it's, it can be very valuable. Well, you, you did talk about that tonight about uh, how annual performance reviews or even biannual performance reviews are. Yeah, they're a joke. Yes, <laughs> yes, because they're a joke. If you want to get better at something, you need feedback more than twice a year. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy to think that it's crazy that we would think otherwise. Uh, and so I like the idea of people basically taking back their performance reviews and doing it themselves. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, people will think about yeah, that. Yeah, so and, listen uh, to that, and I want you to take your performance <laughs> review back and do it yourself. Set your own goals and do your best to meet them. Right. <laughs> so, again, this is Braden Kelly of bloggingintnovation.com and Dan Pink, author of the new book, Drive.